I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. <laughs> Give my little sprint to the office. Okay. All right. So, um, call this meeting to order, and we'll start with a motion to accept the regular minutes from May 8th. May I have a motion? Okay. Any comments, questions, corrections? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. All opposed say no. Motion carries. At this point, I will open it up for public comment. Hearing and Bobby, do you have any public comment? No, thanks. Okay. So um, hearing none, uh, I will close public comment. And we will go on to Roger. Mr. DPW, if you would kindly give your report. Uh <laughs> Last month, I had a meeting with garbage and recycling with the forest. We raised and cleaned, well, we raised the cemetery, cleaned some of the stones, mm -hmm. cleaned about 30 of them, and so a few more to go. Uh, we cleaned and fixed plow damage at the ball field, opened the gate, dirt, set, dirt section of Elm Lake Road, and raked. Took down the posted signs. Uh, sent the sidewalk lower out for service and repair. Uh, Started doing some of our dishes, got a lot of dishes to do, it could take a while. Uh, got the doggy bag things out, which I had to order doggy bags. All of them have some in, but we need to order more and I got them ordered. Uh, I still have them dressed plow in here next. It's been done last month before. <clears throat> and then we got the two ten new tables all put together, ready to go out for the thing for the fire department. Okay, how do those look? They look nice. The only thing is they're white. I mean, we just, I'm going to put them in a little way. No, they're not going to blow away. I'm just basically take them. That's because they're white. Um, but I'm going to put, I've got stickers that I'm going to put on the bottom. That's okay. what they make a difference. They can peel them off. They want yeah. to get textable. But we we have put stickers on the bottom so you can't see them. Okay. Unless they flip them over. And... All right. I hope they're a little difficult to collapse. Uh, they're not too hard. And like I said, they don't weigh an awful lot. Yeah, <laughs> but we haven't had any problem with anything like that. So, okay. and I'll go through some of the old tables and we keep five or six of them down there until we get, because we usually have about 15 to okay. 17. Okay. So we'll have to get some more plastic ones sometime down the road. But. Okay. And if you would kindly do an inventory of how many additional ones we have, yeah, so we'll trash that. trash the really bad mm -hmm. ones and we'll talk about perhaps selling the surplus. And we probably have to keep like four, five, or six down there to, yep. with these ten. Yes. <clears throat> hey, how many tables do we have out usually? Uh, I think there's 16 down there right now. But we put one up to the cemetery. But I don't, I don't think the green ones count in the 16. So the, the four green ones we have to do the point in the cemetery. And so I think we have 16 in brown. Okay. Yep. But we did take one out, so it might be down to 15, but I haven't counted it as late. There's 15, 15 down there. Okay. And the benches are supposed to be here by the end of the week. Right. The <coughs> permanent benches that we have the cement in. Yep. <clears throat> uh, this month coming, garbage recyclables, bow and weedy as needed. We have to paint lines for each parking lot in the clerk's office. Uh, By the beach parking lot, you're referring to the pavilion? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I always call it the beach parking lot. I don't know why. Right. Just to have it, I guess. Okay. Uh, we have to cement down the new benches. I put, put dock in, but that should have been up on the other up side because that's done already. Uh, we want to put the toilets in the bathroom at the beach. <clears throat> we always serve when we have free time or written on Lake Road dirt section just to keep it nice. Uh, we have to come up with a plan for the beach parking lot, whether we're going to do one, two, or three draws and how much money we plan on spending and all that. So we just have to come up with something. Well, we have an engineer. So we have money for an engineer to Good. come and, and see see if they can draw up some plans so that we can apply for okay. a grant. Okay. So I'm still waiting to hear back from uh, oh the planning board, the Lake George Lake Champlain Planning Board to get that, okay, to get that administered. Yep. Uh, 
get Pavilion all clean and well now and looking good for the summer activities. Uh, there's some bent over road signs. We fixed three or four already. I think there's one or two more that got bent over with the plowing and cutting banks. And, um, and we're going to keep cleaning our ditches. It's a long process, but yeah. and then a month after that, it's pretty much the same. Mowing and uh, garbage and recycles, mowing and weeding, put the playground at the ball field. Well, I hope that's going to be done before, before six days. Well, as soon as June comes, I'm going to get the play in, so we'll probably do it next month. Okay, so I, that would be within the next thirty days. Yeah, yeah we could we could move that. Oh, uh, Vermont. I can't remember the name of the place, but it's in Vermont. Okay. Just, just, just over in the way. It's not that far. Yeah. So if we can, if we can move that up to the next thirty days, and instead I'll probably of 60 ask days. Randy if he'll go get the load because they've got the bigger truck, and then we get a okay. Now. Okay. <clears throat> Great. And we continue on our ditches. Yep. Uh, uh, continue working on dirt section at Elm Lake Road. Work on the road that I'm going to pave. I still haven't decided. I, there's only two that I can pave. Which ones are those? One is the beginning of Elm Lake Road from the corners to Philadelphia, uh, where we started last yes or last year. Right. And the other one, I think, was either Gilman Town or no, it had to have been Gilman Town, and that really doesn't need it. So I hate to waste the money on that. I would think Elm Lake. <laughs> So I'll probably just do L Lane this year because we also have two trucks coming in. So Yeah. Okay. Okay, and uh, hopefully start work on the beach parking lot. Um, we're always checking for hanging branches. We're always fixing potholes when we have uh hole packs, we gotta get some of that in June. Mm -hmm. And uh repair real cuts. Okay. <laughs> um, Roger, you can delete the COVID paragraph in your reports now. Okay. You don't have to I, do I, that anymore. Yeah, I left that there. I the thing, but I think it's totally done now, right? Done. I yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and then to make note that the Wednesday after Memorial Day, May 31st, and the Wednesday after Labor Day, September 6th, will be the, the big garbage days for, for pickup. And garbage should be... Uh, the large pickup should be out at the curbside by 7.30. Well, that's oh, garbage days. Oh, and those are regular garbage days, right. So things should be out at, at 7.30. Um, Roger, I did have a couple of questions. I, yep. I know you're shocked to hear that. <laughs> so um, as far as the mulch, you've informed the garden club? No, because when Mark asked me to get the mulch, I thought it was for the garden club. Well, he wanted us to put mulch around the swing set stuff or the oh it, yes it looks better because it's brown yeah. it's not that yeah so he had to get a big load so i've got okay. plenty for the garden, garden club, club when okay. they're ready so. so if you can let the garden club know and again okay. we need what six inches the swing set yeah we it's have to have swing set. it says there's a slide and stuff anything over six foot tall you have to have chip the playground stuff. that's a playground for when they people fall off yeah i was gonna say sand under the two swings right now. Yeah, I meant the, I meant the the big slide. So the one that stands six foot tall, we have to have chips under that. Okay. Although I suppose the guy never said anything about the swing set, but I'm sure sometimes they get higher than six feet when they're swinging. But, <laughs> but Jim, never... you have to keep it under six feet when you're swinging and jumping. Okay. Um. Okay. So so then what I had mentioned before, if we can have. Uh, an accounting of how many old tables there yep. are that are that. reusable, and then we can decide, you know, sell them for twenty-five dollars or something. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Right. Question: Are you cementing down the permanent benches? Now, are those going to be in the location where the wood benches were? Yeah, some of them. <coughs> well, they might be in a different location, but some of them are going to be at the point. I think they said some at the playground. I haven't went down and looked yet. I was just going to ask the point, it. The playground. Yeah, Crystal, Crystal uh, put in flags where, he, where they want them. No, they're not no, we can't. No, no, no. We can't. No, we can't submit them. They're because of the state right away. Yeah. So Mark had a, a comment. Mark? Yeah, Crystal, uh, and I think some of the board members put in flags where they're going to go, and Crystal can tell you exactly where they're going to go. 
Yeah, right. So there were there are six down at the point, right? Six down at the five, five at the point, two at the beach, two at the playground, and one at the tower. Okay, the tower will be kind of sure to see. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna make sure that bench is right between first and second base, about halfway into the outfield. The one near the tower is between the sign um, for the Sacramento River and the little lean to that's there. We were talking about putting it in there. We we put safety fence up there in the winter anyway, so don't yourself. Jim doesn't want in any closer than where the gate is. Right. Right. So, okay. So, um, the and other, the other yeah, question, we, we, uh, took that we took that into account. My only other question is the two at the beach. So there's a lot of machine traffic at this one. They're down. Okay. Yeah, they're down and they're like kind of off. To the okay. And they're yeah, off to the left. Yeah, yeah. Where they put the, the fencing, the state puts up fencing right, as right. well. Okay. Um, so the, Doc will go in. Is it Doc already in? already in? Okay, Doc is already in. Um, the bathrooms at the beach, but there's also the bathrooms at the fire department because the, a, the current paint that we have in there is not really holding I've well. That, I've got that paint on my phone. Okay, I have the paint. I have uh, the paint on my phone. So that's Crystal. Uh, either have her order it or she, she can give me the car and I can order it from the garage. Okay. Either all right. I'll, matter, and we also said rubber mats on top of the paint. Right. It's all sand. The sand is just taking everything off. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah, what ruined the linoleum. Mats for the it, is, it is harsh. And if we can just make sure that I'm, I know it gets gritty and stuff, if we can really wipe all the, the porcelain down, right. um, you know, several times, several times a week, it's not going to be that much to do it each time you go in and, right. and check. Um, so uh, besides the bathrooms at the beach, I have the swimming lines for the beach area that would have to get put out in June or you know, at least by July 4th. Oh, do you like that too? Oh, my bad. We go down there and help them untangle them and they take them out and take Good. them down. Uh, the beach stairs and raking the beach. Right. So I'm in discussions with Deerfoot. I'll find out this weekend whether they'll send a, a lovely crew of, of young men to help us. Uh, get ready for July 4th. They were great last time. Um, as far as the pavilion, is there any staining that needs to be done? Um, I know we've had this back and forth. There may be a little bit of touch up. We decided the way to do staining next year. Okay. Oh, that's so right. That's fine. And, and I'm then, sure there's probably a few spots we can touch up. Yep. And then the gazebo. The gazebo, I, met, I mentioned those two guys again. They said they'd get back to me. I'll try calling them again tomorrow. I hate to keep bugging them, but they're not nope. getting back to me. So. Bug them. Bug them and let's make sure it gets captured in your report okay. so that we can we can do that and then I noted that the play should be done in June yep. so you're you're getting into that and the paving roads yep that's it good um any other comments questions for Roger yeah I have two uh, Roger when are we going to put the mulch in the playground and second did you get the uh, quote from the contractor who just looked at the trees Oh yeah. I haven't had his quote yet. I thought maybe you were sending it here. Maybe that's why I didn't get it, but I haven't seen it. Okay. And the mulch we we can do well this week we got a mow cemetery and everything. So the mulch probably be next week. But we might just be able to do it. Yeah, it's good weather this week. It's supposed to rain Wednesday, so that means we have to put all around mowing until Friday and I've got to make yeah. sure that the cemetery is done first because that's gotta be done before. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Actually. Um, uh, by way of the by way of the trees, I drove by the cemetery again today, and I mean those are huge trees that are so prominent. <laughs> and with those down, it's going to be awfully bare. Um, I had a conversation with uh, Tom and Kathleen Connolly, and they have two beautiful balsam fir trees that are probably about ten feet tall, but pristine condition. <laughs> And there is a forester who is willing to move those trees. So I'm wondering if it's a possibility to move those trees where the white pines are once those are taken out. Because I think those will be much sturdier than the, the white pines in their growth and, and still give you know some sort of beauty to the cemetery be, instead of making it look a little 
decimated. When they take down those trees, are we going to pay to have the stumps ground? Let's see how much it'll cost to and do that. that's kind of a, a little bit away from the stump. But there, so let's see if there's ground. possible. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Let's see if that's possible that we can we could do that because I think that'll really yeah, add. I don't know nothing about it. Even if you grind the stumps, you might not be there. You put it right in that exact spot. So I don't know. Maybe it won't be deep enough to watch it. So if we can, if know. we can talk to the the tree surgeons, that would be that'd be good. Yeah. Normally, you plant trees or transplant them in the fall. Yep. So, yeah. We just have to wait till the fall. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Okay. But um, but I thought it was a a nice deal to have mature trees that someone would actually transplant and and give a new life to. And I got that guy's card. That. Don't blink on his name. But I can give him a call if you haven't got the quote yet. Okay. I don't know why I can't think of his name. Is that a good point? Because you're under pressure. <laughs> I must be. Okay. I don't, I don't work well under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you can get us the quotes back and, um, you know, a few of those other things, that'd be great. All right. Good. Thank you. Am I all set? Yeah. I think you're excused. Yeah. Uh, record, yeah. record time, Roger. Record Thank time. you, Roger. I'll go check the timer for him here. Excellent. Excellent. So, yeah, prior to the thing. Oh, maybe the first thing. Yeah, I don't Oh, the kids are, the kids are putting flags out? Yeah. I remember reading it, but I just can't remember what they are. I'm thinking for a second. They can put it there any time because we need would we be would we be able to finish the weed whacking and stuff before Thursday, before uh, the flags go if out? If it doesn't, if it doesn't work Wednesday, I'll have to mow it Wednesday. They can't Thursday. do it Tuesday. Uh, tomorrow they have. Well, maybe one can be up in there mowing because tomorrow we have a pickle. But I probably can have one guy in the mowing. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. See ya. <clears throat> All right. Clerk-Treasurer. Good. Yeah, we might be all set anyway. Good. All right. Um, Clerk-Treasurer's report. You are a busy woman. Did you send me your resolution? I did. Okay. Uh, first, a couple little things. Uh, we received the fireworks permit for the 4th of July. Do not assign the permit and a copy is sent emails back to the justice. Um, a copy is also available here if anybody would like to see it, along with all the, you know, um, insurance information, all that can basically with it. Um, the tax roll has been received by the village and the warrant has been signed. The notice has been posted to the website and will be in the paper this Wednesday for the next two issues. Um, we had a mailing date of the 25th, but unfortunately the searcher went ahead and mailed uh, the bills early. So we're trying to figure out um, how we process them, so, you know, since they're, the payments are coming, there are payments coming in early. So it's from an accounting perspective. Yeah. So because it's in not due until the next fiscal year. Yeah, and Correct. technically we don't start collecting until June first. Right. They sent. They ended up mailing them like a whole more than a week ahead. So they were supposed to mail them this Thursday, and they went out for the mailing date. They went last Wednesday. And if so, we can note that they were sent out without authorization. Yeah. So uh, the Barry um, from the county, um, he was out for a few days, and they had emailed him saying that. Um, they were going to mail them early um, unless he said something. Well, because he was out, he never got it, and they sent them off. So, um, neither his fault nor ours, just, you know, happened with the printer. So, um, trying to figure out what we legally can do. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then um, I have a resolution for. Your end adjustments. Um, this was my time to do anything today. Yes, yes. Um, do you want me to I, share that? Yeah, if like. Um, so I'm just going to read through this quick. Uh, the village received an increase in revenues for tax penalties, 
um, over our expected revenues. For tax penalties, utilities, gross receipt tax, for the fee is to register fee as part of recreation, recreation concession, zoning fees, refuge charges, cemetery charges, bank interest, insurance recoveries, ARPA monies that we got from Hamilton County, chips reimbursement, and mortgage tax payments that we received. Um, we'll be increasing those uh, budget lines and then the corresponding expenditures uh, accounts. Um, to both modify and even out the any negative accounts we might have and to place the money where it that's appropriate. Um, the DPW personnel services, um, we divide those out every year based on um, based on percentages from the prior year, um, at least how much they work in each department. Um, these accounts always fluctuate year to year, um, so we have to redistrib redistribute a few of those monies. Um, there's actually only um, there's only three of them I think this year that we have to really focus on, or two of them. Um, the revenues for bank interest in the water department was um, higher than expected as well. Um, and there were two accounts that were in the negative in the water budget. Um, so the bank interest helps to offset that and then we'll um, move around monies to, um, to remove those negative accounts. Um, and then same with the um, sewer fund and the water fund. The bank interest was higher than we expected and um, there were actually four accounts that were in the negative but because of the bank interest and um, the uh, you know uh, surplus of other accounts we'll be able to move them those monies around fine so uh, let me go through every single one that we're you want to well I think you've hit the highlights does yeah. anyone want to see all it's it's a long resolution it is a long resolution with many like pluses to as far as like the i increase each of the revenue accounts based on how much they're over mm -hmm. from what we expected and then increased um the expenditure accounts based on um where they should go or and any accounts that were negative i kind of focus on those and then i put in extra where um to even out the revenues and the expenditures for right. those accounts and the the bottom line is that we're in the black yeah the so. bottom line is and we're good we just want to make sure that we're everything is and in the right bucket is, and everything is accounted right. Right. So there's been uh, some recovery for insurance when there was the, the truck incident and a few things like that that get captured in here. Um, the chips. Um, yeah. Also insurance, but recovery money for the water um, for that, uh, what was it, the pump that was damaged? Yep, the pump uh, that went bad. We got uh, money for that. Right. Um, Another little thing. Yep. So, you know, congratulations to the <laughs> superintendents and, and especially Crystal for keeping a really sharp eye on the budget and to to the finance committee that, you know, reviews it every month to make sure things are things are on track and, and projecting well. So I think yeah. I think we've we've done a great job. And Crystal, thank you. I know this has taken you an inordinate amount of time to, to put this together. So um, at this time, I'd like a motion to approve the resolution for the administrative end of year budget amendments for fiscal year 22-23. And second? Motion. Okay, any comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. Okay, um, anything else in your? Um, I just need um, approval of the financial report and the abstract. Is there something you were going to say in your part? 
I thought there was something else you were going to mention. Oh, we might come across it. Okay. So, a uh, motion to approve abstract number 11. So moved. Okay, Mark? Second. Second by Cindy. All in favor say aye. Aye. And what's the abstract number? Uh, 23. 23. Okay, so we'll do 23 first. So, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. Uh, the financial report number 11, may I have a motion to approve that? So moved. Okay, Rebecca and Mark, any comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor of approval say aye. Aye. Okay, all opposed say no. Motion carries. Crystal, thanks for your great work. <laughs> Um, so short-term rentals uh, under old business, we have been distributing the short-term rental posters as agreed. A uh, few people came in today and picked up copies and they have been uh, put out there on a new Facebook page uh, by Chris Fuhrer. So he's keeping that um, conversation going with uh, local short-term rental, rental owners. So thank you to uh, Mr. Fuhrer. Uh, any comments or questions about short-term rentals? I do understand that the uh, Lake Pleasant did pass their uh, law for short-term rentals uh, this past week, uh, a week ago, Monday. So uh, septic systems and erosion regulations. So as we said last time, we had been waiting to see Queensbury uh, New York had a comparable uh, law in place, and it was uh, the legal advice that we wait and see if there were any challenges, that being a much larger operation. Uh, haven't They haven't had any legal challenges, and so they recommended that we go forward. So, Mark, do you want to take us through those? I can call up um, the comments and changes that we that we looked at today uh can it's hard to see yeah let me yeah, make... we, uh, basically we just uh, uh the mayor and i went through it and we commented on what needs definition or authority mm -hmm. somewhere in there i'm trying to make it a little bit bigger okay we don't have that do we? uh you were given a copy you're in email. yeah you were given a copy in in uh email no or queensbury copy. And it should be in your packet as well. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, well, yeah, we, we just, um, um, you know, wanted some, um, they, they talk about waterfront resident, residential zones. And, uh, you know, we just had comments on certain aspects of the document. And what we're going to do is send those comments back to the lawyers so they can put a final document together. Um, I will review that, but it's basically consistent what we had um, through the document. And uh, there's just some, you know, questions on um, articles and town laws that we may have to adopt prior to adopting um, this uh, requirement. Right. So for, they call out waterfront residential zone and so we designed that we defined that prior as 250 feet from a water body such as a lake river stream so that's what we would insert there um we in our law you know you have to we define who can inspect so they have a, a group that utilizes on-site wastewater treatment system uh, no, they their code enforcement officer does that and what we had suggested that it was not only our code enforcement officer but a licensed professional engineer or a qualified certified septic inspector of the homeowner's choice to perform the inspection and that would be using uh, New York State Department of Health New York DEC and APA guidelines and expect inspections would be performed according to uh, provisions that we had had um, and then going forward another, and again, this is only 
for septic when they're changing hands when you're when you're selling or passing along um we did want to know what their code fee was for for their code enforcement officer to do those those evaluations checks and balances and make sure that we would appropriately charge for rick's time and then at the very very end i think some people would be happy um unlike queensbury if there's a, an offense against any provision of the article that constitutes a violation it's punishable by a fine not to exceed 950 You guys froze. Next. Oh, um, so hopefully uh, we would be able to have that in place for our next uh, meeting so that we can put that out as a, a public announcement. Any any other comments or questions on that? If this is only a um, point of sale. Yeah. Point of sale. What if someone has a system that's not working well? Right. We call the Department of Health. Department of Health is notified, and and then they come in, or DEC is notified. So if you know of a system that's failing, or a, a resident has notice of a system that's failing and that includes any system so it's not just speculator if you know of systems that are failing in lake pleasant those reports can be made and if someone doesn't know who to contact they can talk contact the office and we'll we'll provide that because it is important to i'll make sure that you have the information um you know because it is important that we preserve our lake we don't have a lake we don't we don't have anything there's milfoil there are some serious things going on down in wells and people put boats in wells and people put boats up here and we don't want any of that affecting Lake Pleasant and, and Sockendaga. So we really do need to be protective of that. And we talked about a phase two where we would have people inspect our septic tanks and uh, give the uh, village a report and we'll be working on that after this is done. Right. So we'll we'll move that along. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Um, we did get feedback for consolidation of planning and zoning board of appeals. So um, let me let me get that up. So um, we do have a number of examples. So of course, uh, one of our first examples were, was uh, Honeyoy Falls out by Rochester. Um, I was speaking with Todd Metcalf from General Code, so he. We have combination planning boards and zoning boards. Those include uh, Harris Joel. I've never heard of that village, but K I R Y A S and then Joel, J O E L. They have a joint board. Uh, Lavanya has a joint board. Oneida, Lowellville all have joint CBAs. And according to our lawyers, they are popping up more and more um, doing that. So uh, I wanted to, hopefully, you were able to take a peek at that. Um, let me share the screen. Desktop. Are you able to see that? Yeah, okay. All right. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, basically, it's abolishing the um, planning board, which is not a requirement by law, and giving those responsibilities to the ZBA. The ZBA presently has three board members. We would in increase that to five with additional um, folks in there that could substitute. Um, so then it goes through and it shows what laws would have to be repealed. So we would have to repeal the, the code chapter 80 for the planning board that's in our current code. And as you know, we're uh, going through the general code system. So now is the time that 
that we would want to uh, make those adjustments and then transfer the authority of the planning review board in our code to the board of appeals and again increase the um, membership of the board as i stated and then it goes through and just identifies those areas where planning board is mentioned in the code so there's land use code part one part two part three part five um, the establishment of members, the powers and duties now consolidate those from the Board of Appeals and the Planning Board. There is no, there was nothing in our code that would negate having a Planning Board and a Zoning Board, so none of their authorities kind of contradicted each other, um, which is important. So all of these um, powers and duties reflect uh, the planning board and, of course, the zoning board, which is a legal uh, requirement. Um, any any comments or questions um, as you go through to the end? There's the procedure. It's staggered again as we do it in the planning board and and our other uh, our other um, other boards, and then. Uh, changing the land use code part five, article two, appendix B, appendix D as in David and appendix E as in elephant. And then of course the severability and effective date. No comments or questions. Um, at this time, I would, would like to move that we put this as a public hearing or put it out for public hearing uh, for our next meeting. That would be, what, what date is that? Uh, June 12th. So uh, may I have a motion to put the law out? Cindy, I mean, Rebecca, who are you? Yeah, Rebecca first, second? Mark. Okay, Cindy, Mark, Cindy. Um, okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, general codes update. Once this uh, law is approved, it will, if it gets passed, it will go to uh, general codes. Those updates will be made. So this is the final um, final code that's outstanding before we can uh, make these electronically available. So that's a that's a good thing. Um, we are making progress number five peter's oil property update we are making some good progress as you know i sent a letter on our behalf to uh, assemblyman smolin he has forwarded all of our information to the um, attorney general requesting uh, forgiveness of those dec loans and in addition uh, senator lenzik new york senator lenzik um, has come on board and he is in discussions with DEC. Last week they asked if I would provide a memo or a letter stating how the property would be used. And as we said in, uh, in agreement with what the county has said, we would use it for public use. So some sort of park, um, if there are overflows of a festival in uh, Charlie John's parking lot, like we sometimes do with the farmer's market, there could be some overflow there, have some benches, make it beautiful since it is in the center of, of the, the village. Um, it does not rule out the idea of having it as a veterans park. Um, as a veterans park, that was something that uh, Mr. Hoffman had suggested. So it doesn't preclude that, but it, it makes it as an area that will be um, nice for people to have their lunch there or to wait for someone who's coming back from shopping or a nice meeting area uh, that's central in that location so uh they are encouraging no it would be no cost to us so what we're asking for is the dec to forgive the loan i mean forgive the charges lien against the property and that's in excess i think of forty five thousand dollars for the cleanup that they did back in the 1990s and then once they forgive that the county as per barry baker said that they would forgive the lien against the property as well provided that the village used it for a park-like setting 
So that would be fantastic because Barry has said he's he's worked a lot of years. So it's what over 20 years, almost 30 years now. Long time. So it'd be nice to have that usable and beautiful, especially with the the changes that are going on in the in the village. Um, Teamsters Union. There is, I think, our last negotiation before they provide third. Okay, hopefully it'd be last. Um, so at this one, um, yeah. So that's Wednesday, and we'll we'll see what comes out of that. Um, sort of good news for the wild forest roads update. Um, if you'll recall, we passed a resolution not once but twice with letters going to the APA. This is about the wild forest roads that are open to the public. So similar to the snowmobile trails um, where they've taken away uh, mileage and they finally gave back mileage that you can have other trails to, to keep the mileage the same. Uh, nothing has been done to the wild forest roads since 1972. And during that time, the wild forest preserve has been increased by 11.6%. So what they've done is um, through a lot of petition, a lot of negotiation, what has come down to is they are increasing the amount of public road. And let me just grab this real quick. Okay. So, um, if you recall the, the craziness of it, there are two types of roads. There are the public access roads, and then there are roads that are set aside for people with disabilities. And those are not necessarily open to the public. You need a special permit to access those. And those are called CP-3 roads. Um, so what we were pushing for was that the amount of public roads would be increased and not include in the mileage the CP3 roads because they're not open to the general public. So what they have done is that uh, the APA board members sort of understood our position with a CP3, but regardless, that was not passed. So uh, what they did is they counted the CP3 roads into the general public roads. And so they've increased that by 11.6%, which means we have 13 additional miles of public road in our wild forest. A, a win, sort of, but just wanted to update you on that. And I did, speaking of DEC, I did speak with a DEC representative at that meeting um, of the APA, and they said that they are now moving. So this wild forest has stopped the progression of management plans, management use plans. So how does that affect us? That affects us with the proposal of getting bike trails in the tree farm area. So they couldn't progress anything until this was set. We have a regional management use plan that includes all that stuff that's been under review for years, literally years. We've updated it, you know, within the recent couple of years. So now they assure us that it's going to go forward because region five is the largest region. So fun fact to know until region five contains 62% of all New York state forest. It's huge. So what they've done is they've added another director. They've added a few more people to help process that sort of stuff. So we're not in a backlog. But that's the hope. Okay, so much for wild forest. Um, now moving on to, yes, of course. The um, roads, I think you said, we gained 13 miles. 13. How many of those are inclusive of the CP3? Those are new roads. Right. Those, correct. So what they did when they determined when they determined the percentage of roads. So we, we wanted it based on the mileage, then we would expect you get a larger number. So the CP3 roads kept it to 13 miles. I think we would have gotten like 15 or 17 miles without the CP3 roads if we didn't include those. And are the bike trails limited to just the thing? Bike trails are separate. Bike trails are separate. Right. All right. Um, so there was some good news and some disturbing news. Um, at NICOM. Uh, one of my favorite sessions is when they go through 
the adopted state budget and how it impacts the local government as well as the legislative sessions. And I did want to highlight just a few. Uh, for anyone who's interested, I gave you some top line highlights, but more specific ones I think I forwarded. And if anyone in the general public would like a copy of that, they can contact us and we'll, we're happy to provide that. Um, the first up is my great disappointment. They, uh, it's the Safe Water Action Program or something like that. It's called SWAP. And so it's a proposal that the state provide monies to water and wastewater treatment systems similar to CHIPS, not included in this year's budget. So that got mixed again, but they're still fighting for that. We did not see any increase in AIM funding and that has not been increased for years, years and years. So they did not increase AIM. Uh, CHIPS funding has increased. So we may be seeing a little bit of that. The extreme winter recovery funding stays the same. Pave New York stays the same. And the Pave Our Potholes program stays the same. So we've got some monies. We've got some monies there. Um, there is, there's the next one. Uh, the state minimum wage, not that it impacts the village directly, but there is a state minimum wage increase. Municipalities, I found out, use the federal rate, but within New York State, they are increasing the minimum wage from $15 to $17 an hour in New York City, Long Island, and Westchester, and to $16 an hour in the rest of the state by uh, 2026. Um, the one that affects all of us or upsets us the most is sustainable buildings. And this is the one that prohibits the installation of fossil fuel equipment and buildings in any new building that is seven stories or less. And that starts on December 31st, 2025. So it prohibits the installation of fossil fuel equipment and building systems in all new buildings. Anything higher than that, it kicks in in 2028. It does not apply, they were very happy to tell us, it does not apply to existing buildings, including repairs, alterations, additions, relocations, or changes of occupancy or use. So that you can still maintain your, your propane and fossil fuel. Um, there are some exemptions that include emergency backup power, standby power systems, so our generators are safe, I think, manufactured homes, uh, buildings that are used as manufacturing facilities, commercial food establishments, laboratories, car washes, laundromats, uh, critical infrastructure, emergency management facilities, wastewater treatment plant facilities, which is good water treatment and pumping facilities. It also, this is where it affects us in the North Country. The budget also allows for exemptions when new building construction projects require new or expanded electric service when such service cannot be reasonably provided by the grid as operated by the local electric corporation or municipal utility and authorizes public service commission to determine reasonableness. So I think that's something that really applies here for reasonableness of adding that, all those things to the grid. Maybe there's a glimmer of hope in that. Um, and then something that I thought was interesting is they have set aside $3.45 million for matching grants to assist municipalities with local tourism effects. So I think that this is something that we may be able to see if we can get some monies to do that. Um, with the legislative action, um, ah, this, is, this is one that's gonna hit us between the eyes if it gets approved, and it looks like it will be approved. Mandatory local affordable housing plans. So what they are requiring every local government to do, what they're proposing, is to adopt an affordable housing plan that must address financial assistance to home buyers, production of new housing, rehab of existing buildings, acquisition of real property to the existing housing stock, creation of accessory dwelling units, and housing counseling services. 
and such plans would have to be updated every five years. So these plans for a village of our size would cost anywhere between $100,000 to $250,000. So uh, NICOM is suggesting that state funding be included to assist the development of such plans, but that's going to be that's going to be extremely difficult. So that's for everybody across the board. Um, the next one is state investigations of enforcement and administration of the uniform code. Now this passed and it gives me some pause because this would require the secretary of state to investigate complaints of municipalities who fail to administer and enforce their uniform code and transfer that code enforcement responsibility to the county if a local government is found incapable or unwilling to administer and enforce their code. Now that has passed. I think so far we're on reasonable ground, but that's that's pretty bad when you start taking enforcement authority away from the local municipalities. So I think we need to keep an eye on that. The next thing, uh, you know that we have talked about uh, reimbursement or credit for uh, firefighters and ambulance workers. So uh, there is a bill which is in the Assembly Ways and Means Committee and the Senate Budget Review. It seems like they are pro. So we were talking about whether you could get a credit on your tax, your personal tax, or get a credit on your housing or, or your um, property tax. And what this bill is saying is to give both because there are so few firefighters and EMS workers that they wanna do both. So it's likely that that will pass. So we're holding on a little bit to see whether that passes and then what we would do with our uh, proposal in that regard. And also EMS financing is in both the assembly and the Senate, the health committees. So they are looking to establish a chip style model uh, for funding of EMS services. So also interesting and could be helpful, especially if we could apply it to the fly car costs. Just a, just a thought. Um, and then something that passed, which is concerning, is using NIPA as the sole provider of renewable energy. So in this, it authorizes uh, NIPA the ability to purchase, acquire, plan, design, engineer, finance, construct, et cetera, we maintain all renewable energy projects in the state, which is a little concerning. So that has passed the Senate. Um, so it's a, it's a matter of how that would actually play out for us. And as we evaluate um, whether we should sign up for solar, uh, solar power, how that's going to be affected. And then the last one um, affects us it was passed in the Senate. It's before the Assembly Rules Committee. This is the Lead Pipe Right to Know Act. So right now, DEC, no, EPA requires us to, to do the copper rule. So we're monitoring for copper. And as Ed has said, we're, we're doing that testing for that. Well, what the Lead Pipe Right to Know is it's duplicative. So now they want us to do twice and this would require our public water system to submit to the Department of Health a service line inventory identifying all those systems that may have lead, and then additionally obligate those systems that do contain lead. I don't think we have any. We've already sent out a survey that is gathering. Is it for the lead pipe right to know? Or is it for the EPA copper rules that include that stuff? So the bottom line is we're going to hit get to hit twice. It, it may be it the might be lead. The, it, might be for the, it might be for the lead. So um, it is duplicative, and NICOM is is lobbying that they modify that that we don't have to do twice as much and tag all that all that sort of stuff. So needs to say it was a very busy meeting, and I am pleased to say that. A lot of those mayors know exactly where speculator is. 
which was kind of which was kind of nice. So, okay. Um, open meetings law. So, um, Trustee Rumsey, do you want to walk us through? Sure. That? I'm trying to. We did some research and. Um, yeah, let me see if I can. Uh, this. Pretty much came up with um, just a few adaptations to what the sample that was sent out by the New York State um, to all of us and just adapted that a little bit so that, but I did notice Jeanette in here, um, it has the, um, whether we need to add this or not, where it talks about authorizing public bodies to allow any member of a public body who has a disability that renders them unable to participate in, pe in person to be counted toward the quorum. That's in this oh. sheet that we would just pass it gave to us, um, which I did not have no. for open meeting. I started. Oh, we could do that. So I think we're going to need to add that to yeah. our uh, local laws as well um because it just says that they they adopted they amended that article so um so i have it up on the screen for yeah, those who are participating read it it's just that we have to have a forum and um basically the biggest thing is that um it's you have to attend the meeting if you're able to be in town um if you're here locally unless it's an extreme circumstance which would include may include disability or illness caregiving responsibilities and any other significant factor or event which precludes such members physical attendance at such meetings at a meeting location that is open to the public so we do have to attend our meetings if we are able to uh, not be home bound um the other thing is that uh, we were including all of our boards so that it wasn't just going to be our town board that it would be our our zoning um, as well so that anything that would be required that public any public would meeting we would be able to have a yeah, video they, conference we, we would have to go back and re rewrite something from land use and all those kinds of things so um yeah so so I think that, I, you know, in, in one sense, I think it's a good thing to have it open for our public because we do have uh, people who have split residencies and hopefully this will continue to allow people to participate or, or those who were not able to get out, they would still be able to do that and allow us as a board, if, if someone's away or called away, can still participate um, from the distance, but the quorum still has to be, a quorum still has to be present. Uh, in this. Um, and if you're video conferencing, it does not count toward the board. Unless. Uh, unless you're disabled. Unless you're disabled. Right. So we'll, we'll write that in. Yeah. There. So we can we can add that in. So um, are there any comments or questions about this? We tried to make this as um, distinct as possible so that it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there were other places that oh my had gosh. all kinds of in there I think he had to give DNA samples yeah. in none of them. And I was, as I was reading through, I'm teasing like, Jim. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so what I'm looking for is a motion to hold a public hearing on this law. Huh? Yeah, um, at the same time as the 12th? Yes, we can. Yep, on the 12th. Okay, Jim, second. Rebecca, any comments or questions? All right, we'll have a second public hearing for a local law authorizing the village of speculator public bodies to use video conferencing technology for public meetings. Oh, all in favor? All in favor say aye. aye. Technicalities. All opposed say no. Motion carries. June 12th. Thank you, Crystal, for keeping me on, on track. All right, um, next is the risk management recommendation. So this is uh, when Nimer comes along and they send a very nice man who says, all right, these are the issues for risk that how are you going to address them or are you going to address them? <laughs> so the three, the three things that came up were 
the water in and out form. So the meters metering in and out and turning on and off water. So we will discuss that this evening. Um, the second is signage at the water facility and tanks basically, you know, keep out like this is public. Don't don't mess with it. And then the third most costly point was he was recommending a central reporting fire alarm for the wastewater control building and the DPW garage. So right now there are auditory alarms that go off, but they they don't send a signal to the fire department, not that anyone would really be there to answer it except on Tuesdays, and uh, it doesn't go to the dispatch saying that there's a fire. So basically relies on neighbors to hear that and, and report it. Um, so I did ask Ed and Roger about how much that kind of system would cost. Um, so Ed got back to me and said that the type of alarm system that's being suggested costs a minimum of $10,000 just for the panel that would trigger it. This does not include the wiring and sensors that would be required for every room of every building. Along with this, they, there need to be uh, there needs to be a dedicated phone line for a direct link to the sheriff's office. So it's an auto dialer uh, to the sheriff's office. Um, for both the highway and the wastewater plant, we would be looking somewhere in the neighborhood of thirty thousand dollars plus the additional expense of approximately $1,500 for annual operating costs associated with the phone line services. And there's usually an annual inspection or test fee associated as well. So obviously this is not something we can do immediately. Um, I do have a, a call into our fire department to see if there are any recommendations and then you know, we'll we'll keep looking around to see if there's something we can do. Now, just because it's identified for us as a risk doesn't mean we have to do it exactly the way it has been proposed. I think one of the reasons why they're so sensitive to this is that this past fall, fall winter, they had three DPW garages burned down. But, you know, very unusual. So I think that that's why they're more sensitive to it. So that will that will stay on our radar. Um, but for the water in and out, um, meter in and out. Uh, um, okay. So what what Crystal has done with input from? Yeah, I did not. I Mirror screen is frozen. Is that what? Okay. Your screen keeps freezing up. Ah, okay. And that's can you can you see it now? Yeah. Yeah. That's no I feel, problem. I feel like I'm the Verizon person, right? Yes. We don't have our form. No. Do you have the form up? No. <laughs> okay. So the form, so what the form does is it, it asks what you need. This now is updated to have, uh, to grant the authority or the approval for wastewater treatment plant to actually turn on and off the meter. I mean, turn on and off the water or take the meter in and out, whereas before we didn't have that. And it's oh, also a more, oh, yes, I can stop sharing. Okay. Something's so, going on. Okay, now I heard you. 
we're just watching we're just we're all quiet <laughs> we're just watching crystal do her magic so as that's coming up um the copies of the proposed laws that will be out for a public meeting will be available both on the website and and here for anybody who wishes to see that okay so this is the water shut off turn on application so it has the owner name uh it allows for a representative uh that they're authorizing the request there are fees so there's a fee for a shut off and turn on that is presently ten dollars a fee for meter removal or reinstall of fifty dollars and then there are additional fees for after hours weekend or removal uh, of a charge of eighty dollars uh, for the meter and forty dollars for um, the turning on and off of water and then it signifies that uh, we shall the village shall not be liable for any damage which may result to the consumers plumbing appliances etc there are special instructions and so we're we're making sure that these forms are signed they are scheduled they're no longer hey i called you um so as you will recall there was an incident where um we got a, a request to pay for some flooding because it it pipes burst during the winter and they said oh we called you about that and there was no record so this really formalizes that position so the question arises how much does it really cost us signature portion to right. yeah, i think the fees are too low i mean ten dollars so, no my screen is frozen okay all right so um the fees seem to be very low you know ten dollars yes. i mean it, they needed to be well, just no. We haven't changed it yet. That's uh, yeah, that's so that's what we're yeah. discussing now. Yeah. Okay. So you can you can you can see this now. Okay. So uh, what we did is we looked to see how long it would take to install meters um, based on the different folks that we have. So during normal business hours, that ranges between. $23 and $60, depending on, on who is doing it. And it's two people are required. Two people. Yeah. And so what I did is I added, so I added the two people, the two lowest amounts and the oh, gotcha. highest paid to get my ring. Okay. Right. So, you know, at this point, we wouldn't have the two untrained people go and do it. You would always have right. to have a more experienced person. I think so, I described how I. Yes. <laughs> You did. So the lowest, the lowest paid employee was the lowest paid senior employee being, you know. For example, Lynn, Lynn Page and Lenny Page. Yeah. And then the highest would be the two highest paid employees for an hour because some of these take longer to do. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, was, I was making a proposal, just throwing it out there. I was suggesting we charge $60 for taking meters in and out. What? It, yes, in. Right. Yes, I'm sorry, for each time. So a $60 fee to put the meter in and a $60 fee to take a meter out. Yep. Now, bear in mind, if they want to put in a meter pit, they don't have to take it in and out. So there could be an advantage to putting in meter pits for, for an individual. But we would do that to cover the cost of what it, what it costs the village to actually do that. If someone wants to do a meter pit, who does that? they would put it in they would hire somebody they would hire meter. someone to put that and in yes the meter has to come from the us water correct correct so they would purchase the meter from us or do we no they have a meter everyone gets everyone a meter. Gets it. yeah yep. so they just have to do the actual pitting uh, <laughs> okay. yes the excavating yeah that's all covered under local law for the water yeah that that is covered under our local water law okay so all those all those specifics so um pros and cons to a 60 dollars charge so that's 120 dollars a year weekend, well okay so now yeah we're getting on to that 
So um, move this right along. <laughs> yes. So the the meter install and taking out would be sixty dollars per occurrence um, on the weekend. Now we have a minimum we're thinking about after hours. You know, if we call someone in for DPW, that's automatically two hours. Wow. Right, yeah. so and you're calling in two people for four hours, so now it gets more costly. Yeah. So I would recommend a hundred and seventy-five dollar fee when you're off hours special, because every effort should be made to have it done during normal working hours. And I and I think that that would also serve as a deterrent for people to call at the last minute, you know, Friday night, saying, "Hey, I'm coming in." Yeah, but also. But it, that's what it costs us. No, I understand that, but it also should, if that those requests are going to be made, so they should be. I mean, if people are making the requests, they're going to be done during made in advance and our and during hours that are appropriate for when the guys are working. Correct. Correct. Because they're not going to charge off hours if they didn't get to it. Is what I'm saying. Correct. Right. Correct. Correct. It, so it safeguards that. Yes. <laughs> So then the time to turn on and off water itself can be much shorter, but it has the requirement of, you know, a minimum amount of time. So, uh, so I'm sorry. So that would take about 15 to 30 minutes to turn on water, depending on where it is, how far they have to crawl. So um, I was recommending $25 to turn on the water and then $25 to turn off the water seems minimum um, and then when you're looking at after hours weekends holidays you know we're dealing with the added time the time and a half and so I was recommending that that we charge $125 on the on the weekends yeah you, I would say that they shouldn't ask for this only if there's an emergency um, we shouldn't do it on weekends because I talked to Ed about this it should be done Monday through Friday normal business hours and only an emergency should they do it on a weekend or a holiday for water on and off yeah i mean you know somebody's got to come ed has to come in from arietta and and do this it's it's absolutely ridiculous yeah um so can you put the do we know how many times approximately I have heard the complaints. <laughs> I don't think it's every week, but it, it but you know, people will say, oh, I forgot to call about yeah. turning on the water. And they, they, yeah, but it's not, it's not like it's once in a lifetime occurrence. No, it's, it's enough, it's enough that it's problematic. And I don't know if, am I allowed to ask a question? Excuse me? Oh, am I allowed to ask a question? Well, usually we wait for you to, to do it during public comment, but since it's oh. your first time, since it's your first time and it's relevant, yes. Are you talking about people turning off their water to their house, like yes. out by the street? Yes. Curb Don't stop. they have the tool to do it themselves? Mark, some do, some don't. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Yes. Mark, that's Ginny Nevistat. Oh, hi, Jenny. <laughs> so, Mark, you're on mute. Did he walk away? There he is. No, I'm just standing. I'm oh, here. yeah, no, I know you've got your, your uh, okay. back. Um, so, Mark, as far as people having a tool to turn on and off their water at the curb stop, is that? Yeah, I, 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 you know, I have one. You can buy one, and they could do it themselves. My question is, why are we going out on overtime um, and, and, you know, charging for this when they should do it during, during normal business hours? And right. if there's an emergency, you know, there's a leak or something, you, you go out and shut it off, you, you know, but it's, it should only be based on an emergency situation. Right. So I hope that answers your question, question, Jenny. So people are able to do that by themselves but don't over tighten or under tighten. Yeah. There'll be all sorts of sorts of issues with that. So, okay. Thanks. Yep. So, um, 
So then on an emergency basis, so we'll, we'll change the form um, to put that clause in there for the, the water on and off under, under emergency. And if it does constitute an emergency, a uh, $125 fee will be applied. Well, now we're gonna get into what's an emergency. I mean, somebody comes up here a leak. and- A leak. That would be um, an emergency. And that's it? Like a break and that's it? So yeah, I mean, just because you forgot doesn't mean we have to, you know, send people out on overtime in the weekends. I mean, I I recall I recall one situation where where someone had come up and there was a, an infant, there was you yeah. know whatever, and they they forgot to to turn on their water, uh -huh. but they're calling at nine or ten o'clock at night uh -huh. saying, hey, we're here, and there's no water on, and we forgot to call. So what do you do in that? That's all I'm asking. What yeah. do charge two hundred and fifty dollars? <laughs> no, but yeah. I, uh, I'm sorry, we can't do that. Um, just asking. But it's always good to have good definitions. Yeah. You're asking for, you know. Yeah. So so I think primarily it's in in case of leaks. You know, if there is a leak that you know a leak is discovered or found, you know, to turn it to turn it off. Um, you know, if people have a jug of water, then they can, you know, in theory, they can wait. Okay. Yeah. Well, no. I think we'd let Ed determine what's an emergency. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is, is Lenny, is Lenny hard hearted? No, but yeah, I mean. Ed, Ed will come if it's, you know, if it's really, if it's really necessary. Okay. Uh, because he did come out in the middle of wherever to, oh, yeah. to turn on water. Okay, so, uh, so if we qualify, if, can we go back to the form? Only if you stop. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sharing has been stopped. So demanding. I know. <laughs> Okay, so if we if you want to request the water to be on, you know, like if you're going to renew your prescription, you have to do it in the next, you know, lead time. Would that help with some of this? I'm in the car and I forgot. I yeah. So what do you think? A two day well, lead time? Our, well, it is all stated in our water law. Oh, okay. Do we need to put it on the application? We say, you know, it, well, it doesn't understanding the requirements in the local law. So, I mean, how long do you want this application? We're trying to keep it to a page. Yeah. <laughs> how far? How far is it now? It's a page. Huh. I've got it all the way. If you said this forty-eight hours, in. yeah. I think it. I think there is a forty-eight hour window where they have to request it. Yeah. So if but we put in there. Are, We've already talked, Ed and I have already talked to Mark about going through the water lot as well. What do you mean? Like, for updates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to clarify some sections. Yeah, that hasn't been reviewed in a couple of years. That's another law we'll go through. <laughs> okay, so if we can add that time window, so as not to take up, you know. I think that a lot of yeah, um, then, you know, well, our local laws are on our website. Yeah, but for if somebody is like frantically trying to get their water turned on, they're going to be like, "Where's the local law?" Yeah. <laughs> Most people that have their water turned they on, they know where it is. Have it done every single year. Yeah, so um, it's not like a new event. Right. You know, there is there if is some an planning, and they're going to be following anyways. Yeah. So, so if we can scroll down. Um, uh, there's not much. So, where where do we where do where would we put in? You know, only for abject emergencies. Um, I guess we can. So additional fees for after. Uh, maybe I don't know. 
Not if we're changing after hours costs to be for emergency basis only, because I think emergencies depending on local law are just great. Yeah. So. All right. So you know, Udu, we'll we'll take this off. We'll refine it. But I we'll tweak it. Spread our <laughs> Guess what we'll be doing in the next two weeks. Yeah. So we'll we'll take this back and refine it, and then bring back bring back something that will be votable. How's that? Yeah. All right. So, so did you send that to Henry to make sure that our wording, because this wording here, uh, right here, is not, it doesn't exactly state what he wrote down. And so long as it's something comparable and it's consistent with our law. So as I mentioned before, we don't have to do exactly what they say, Yeah. but okay. have it something that we're comfortable with okay. um, proceeding. So, okay, so you can, Stop sharing. Yes, thank you, Chris Bolt. Yeah, once, once this is done, we can uh, then look at the local law and, and make changes to if we reflect this document. Correct, correct, good. Okay, and we've gone through the septic. Okay, so um, any other new business? Hearing no other new business, I move to the board round table session. Um, we had we had talked about um signs street signs uh the requirement for street signs being four inches right, 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 okay. right, right. so house house signs so um speculator volunteer ambulance corps is going to have a fundraiser for street signs it will be a certain period of time that street we will house signs. house signs okay. house numbers yeah. the actual house numbers that have to be contrasting colors they have to be four inches high blah 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 so i spoke to uh now i'm speaking with my emt hat on um i spoke to 911 safety street they are able to do four inch letters signs will cost 25 dollars there will be we'll do a promotion for um a certain prescribed period of time do you want to sign up this is how much it's going to cost. Where are your numbers, and we'll get that. We'll get that moving. So it won't be an all well, summer long event. Then. On the road, at the road, or near your house, you know, so that EMS, any emergency services coming by, they can readily see. They, they can they could be on your post, or like you have a yeah. you yeah. have a post. You can put the four letters there. You don't have to have them uh -huh. if you have numbers okay. that are four inches high. I'm going to take out my ruler, but there are some people have nothing, yeah, which makes it very problematic. So there are some people on Elm Lake Road who have those numbers on a tree that's in front of their house. Uh, for 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 myself, I have a sign where I've carved out, you know, letters that are, you know, are numbers that are large enough. So, all right, regardless, so, uh, we're still viewing your screen, by the way. Well, um, can you stop sharing, please? Stop. Yeah. You stop sharing. Okay. So that's just to put that out in the public domain that, that we are going to make those available because there are people who ask, you know, hey, how do I get those numbers or where do I get them? And those will be sent and, and be able to apply. All right. So my, my next thing is no doubt most of you have heard about uh, the situation in New York City about immigration which is uh, there was a call that uh, Governor Hochul had with NICOM members, but of course there wasn't a whole lot of time to uh, give notice for that. So the governor wanted to make sure that mayors had a better understanding of the actual numbers and situation in New York City with immigration. I think to date they have over 37,000 immigrants that have come to New York City, and so they're having some issues with that. Um, and as a result, the New York City mayor was busing out uh, busloads of immigrants to uh, counties outside of the, the metropolitan area. Some were notified and some were not notified, and that causes a lot of, a lot of issues. As you know, there are a number of counties that have issued state of emergency, uh not allowing immigrants to come in or not allowing hotels to rent in those situations so it's a very difficult difficult situation so 
She said that uh, they are evaluating other places for migrants to stay, both in New York City and outside of New York City. They said that they'll do their best to tell communities in advance if there are people being sent their way. And they're gonna do their best. And she also said she's been in conti a continuous communication with various officials at the federal level to emphasize the need for additional funding to offset the costs that New York City and other communities are going to face as a result. So with that, with that said, I've heard it, I've heard it repeated a number of times. Um, the mayor of the mayor of Albany has has stated, where did she state that? Oh, sorry. The mayor of Albany has said um, a number of times that they will welcome migrants if and when they arrive and quote i think the states of emergency i think some of the political the polarization of this is dehumanizing these are human beings who are here and they are here and coming so basically um this is not an insurmountable challenge in her mind and that we owe it to ourselves and our communities to find a way to ensure that we are able to welcome families, allow them to get settled, just as our families built wealth and started businesses. So during her statement um, at NICOM, she said that upstate New York had a lot of openings and a lot of space and that she would uh, try and see how we, we could work together to um, accommodate them. So uh, there are a number of counties, as I've said, who've declared state of emergency. Hamilton County has not done that. Um, as of this point, I don't think we have a lot of big hotels that would be able to accommodate them or openings, but to say that, you know, I'm not sure. I just wanted to... Well, they were looking at gymnasiums in public schools so that kids would essentially be on lockdown, like they wouldn't be able to use their gymnasium because that would be open as a shelter for migrants. They are looking at places where they have um, psychiatric hospitals that are no longer in use to rehab those to accommodate. There are some prisons in our area that um, are no longer in use, so they would open <laughs> don't know but i they're looking they're looking for opportunities so it it may become very problematic speaking with some residents in albany they say it's starting to get pretty bad down there although you wouldn't know it from some of the chatter um okay so i just wanted um at the county level Yes. It does not appear correct. It does not appear that we would declare a state of emergency at this time. So I will keep my ear to the ground and God forbid it doesn't become an issue here because we don't even have housing for our own people. You know, which is a which is a problem. Um, I did have on the agenda um, an executive session to discuss an issue of vandalism. So what I will say here is that I have not received the sheriff's report. Um, if you'll recall, I sent out an email and I did post on, on Facebook looking, looking for any information regarding vandalism. Uh, things were spray painted on the trash receptacle, so there were at least three of those. Um, there was uh, graffiti, the Bud Light Boys or something on the, um, the bridge. There's more graffiti underneath the bridge that has been found. And so the Sheriff's Department had contacted us. They were writing up a report it's being reviewed by the under sheriff. And I thought that I would have it today that we could discuss whether we want to press charges or whether it was something that perhaps community service would be in order to uh, 
show the error of this this young person's ways because they have identified the person. Um, however, this evening um, I found out shortly before this meeting that additional graffiti has been found, and um, it may. Find, that's what they say. So that's to be. So I won't I won't publicly say what those things were, but um, with your discretion, I would like to postpone the discussion of that until we have a full and complete report because the charges may or may not be more serious. So, so there will be no executive session. Um, public comments, we'll open it up at this time. Hearing none, I'll, I'll close public. <laughs> and, and Mark Doniker. I'd like to adjourn this meeting. All right, thank you very much. And I would like to note that